What's going on, everyone? This is your boy, Eric Devendorf. Welcome to the Devo Show. Our guy, Chris Joe, he'll be on soon. Don't you wish you could be like me and do a show and then sit here on a couch with a pillow in, in your lap? That's, that's probably uh, the most comfortable way to do a show. But anyway, man, we, uh, we got a lot, of, lot to get to today. Obviously, um, a disappointing loss last night uh, versus Colgate. Colgate is on a two-game winning streak versus us now. Uh, I actually did the game last year uh, at the Dome, um, so I guess I was bad luck. And so I didn't go this year thinking that I, um, you know, I, I would be bad luck again. And uh, it turned out to be the same result. So I guess it's it's not me, you know. It, um, but overall, man, um, you know, just a, a, a few things about last night. Um Obviously, both ends of the floor, um, we didn't look good. You know, starting offensively, uh, lack of spacing, um, you know, lack of the offensive flow. Uh, guys, the toughness wasn't there. You know, defensively, zone and man, you know, guys looked out of sorts. You know, we weren't rotating in the zone. Man to man, we're letting guys go by us. And don't get me wrong, Colgate is a good team. Right, they're they're a good mid-major team. Uh, they're not a team that's going to be competing for a national championship, um, but they're a team that's well coached. Shout out to Coach Langle. Um, I, I think that he is, you know, one of the best mid-major coaches in in, in the country. Uh, I think he has his team ready. Um, Colgate is an excellent passing team, and, and that's something that kind of bothered me yesterday because when we were playing man to man. We we're having no ball pressure. There, there was no ball pressure, and Colgate's a team that if you let those guys survey over the defense and, and look over the defense, they're going to eat you up. Uh, we saw that in a couple backdoor cuts. Uh, you know, they're getting into the middle of the zone. They're just kicking it out, and, um, you know, we were struggling with our rotations, man. It was too many open shots. When, when, you're, when you get – not only did they make 19 threes – but they shot 38 threes. When, whenever you're shooting that many threes or you get that many three-point attempts, um, something's going on, you know, with your defense. So, um, obviously, a lot, a lot to work on on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and, you know, last night after the post game, um, you know, I, I talked about Joe a little bit. You know, we, we talked about Jesse. Um, you know, again, for Joe, I think Joe's a great player, man. I, I think – um, he's had a solid career here at, at Syracuse. You know, he's been playing since a freshman. But in reality, if Joe is not making shots, you know, if his shot isn't on, you know, it's going to be hard for us to win games. You know, it's going to be hard for, uh, you know, him to, to have an impact, you know, on the game. You know, he, he's not the fastest. He doesn't have a, a blazing speed and he's not the strongest guy. Um, but he is an elite shooter. He, he, he's one of the best shooters in the country, and, um, you know, that's what he does best. So if he's not making shots, he's not making three-point shots, it, it's going to be a tough night for him. It's going to be a tough night for our team. Um, you know, talking a little bit about Jesse, um, I, you know, we look at the numbers. He had 10, 7, and 5. Uh, you know, you look at those numbers, and you're like, all right, it's not terrible. You know, five block shots. He's going to, you know, be, um, you know, in the top of uh, block shots in the country at the end of the year. But just like we talked about, man, he has to bring more of a uh, enforcer feel, like especially against teams like this, man. They, you know, we saw, you know, the first game against Lehigh, you know, whatever he had, 20 and, and 10 or whatever, he, he looked like he, you know, he was ready to, you know, take on that role as the enforcer, dominate on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, and, and we we're looking for that consistency, in, in that role. And I think, uh, you know, we didn't see that, that enforcer. We didn't see that toughness last night against Colgate. Um, you know, he, one thing I was saying, um, you know, during the post game is, you know, obviously Jesse's not a guy that you, you, you could just throw him the ball and tell him to go ahead. Right. He, he, he's not that type of player, but when he does post up, he has to be able to be lower. He, he's getting the ball too high, and now he's taking one, two, three dribbles. And, and by that time, you know, guys are, you know, they're double teaming, and, 
Uh, now he's struggling making a uh, making a move. He has to be able to get the ball right by the basket. You know, the, I don't know if they could start doing that little cross screen where he can come over top and flash high, or or go underneath and and catch it low, and then just go turn it and go up. But you know, when he gets it far away from the basket, he struggles because he's not the strongest guy. He's lean and uh, lanky, but he's he, he's not the strongest guy. And we saw yesterday, even you know, with with Colgate's guy when he caught it that high. Uh, they were just pushing him out, man. He he wasn't able to back down and and, and get into, um, you know, get into his move or whatever it, you know whatever it is um, that he likes to do. But uh, he has to be able to post up lower. He has to get the ball lower and then just turn and go. And that and, and that's something that his teammates have to communicate to him. You know, going down the floor. You know, uh, Judah, Joe, whatever it is, you got to tell him, hey, we got to get you lower. You're more effective right there. You know, and now. When you get a couple of those buckets, now he's feeling good. Now he's running the floor. Welcome. <laughs> he has Yo, arrived. What's up, man? <laughs> man, I, 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 I oh, was just uh, – so just to update you a little bit, Joe, I was kind of just going into the recap about last night. Um, I, you know, I did the the post game last night, and, and um, so I'll, I'll go back a little bit. We were just talking about Joe, man, and I was, uh, you know, just telling these guys – you know, we're, we're going to be honest, right? We're not trying to bash anybody, but we have to be 100% honest w with our opinion. You know, this is our opinion, not saying yeah. we might be, we might be right, we might be wrong. And what I was saying about right. Joe is Joe is an elite shooter, right? He, he He's one of the best shooters in the country, right? But if he's not making shots, if he's not making three-point shots, we're going to struggle as a team, and, and I think he's going to struggle. You know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. we're going to see he, – he, he's not going to be four for 15 every game. He, we're going to see games where he's hes on and he's making shots. But if he's not making shots, bro, from the outside, just being honest, what else is he going to give us? You know what I'm saying? He's not a guy who's going to shake and bake, break you down, get to the hole, go and kick it. You know, he's been here. This is his fourth year. He's a senior. He kind of is what he is. You know, I, I mean, I haven't really seen him add the strength or add the speed to, you know, do something different in his game. He, you know, he's kind of been the same guy since his freshman year, and 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 he's had a great career. Let's, you know, I'm not trying to take any way anything away from him, but you know, where we're at right now and what we need from him on this team, he has to be consistent with making shots every single game. Else, it's, oh, yeah, it's going to be sure. hard for, for us to win games. I mean, what do you think, Joe? Yeah, no question. You know, being, um, you know, 5'10", 5'11", you got to be elite, you know, an elite guard. You have to have, you, usually you see guards that small, they're lightning quick. You know, they have a great, you know, change of pace. They can get to the basket They they or they have athleticism. I think every time I think of small guards, man, I think of someone um, who I had the, the luxury of playing with overseas, Irv Walker. So I played against him since I was in uh, – in high school on the AAU circuit. He's 5'9". You know, he went to Florida. He was the starting point guard for the Florida Gators. And, I mean, he has elite quickness, shooting ability. He gets to the basket. He's not afraid of contact. So when you're that small, you know, you're that small your whole life. So you figure out ways to, you know, be effective on the basketball court, right? Um, that's So when I see Joe, outside of the shooting ability, you're not getting to the cup like that for real. Um, you're not beating everybody off the dribble. Often, you know, he has, he, he's, he, he has some slick handle. You feel me? He could get off. He could get a shot off. He could create space. But again, just to piggyback on your point, going four for 12 from three, you know, you're shooting, you're going to shoot a lot of shots. We've seen this in the past with, with him and Buddy last season and Cole. Guys were getting up um, double digit threes very often. You're going to have to shoot a high clip. And four for 12 uh, from, from three, I guess, isn't, it could be worse. You know what I mean? But you're going to have to be a little bit more efficient. For the team's success. Now, from a percentage, from a percentage standpoint, what you want to shoot over 35, between 35, 40%. And he's probably with four, shooting four for 12, he's right around there, right? But for the team, you're going to have to be more consistent. You know, if you can't, all your points can't come from behind the arc and then with two free throws. You know what I mean? And then you're adding in, you know, three turnovers and one assist. You know what I mean? So it's like you got to be able to get guys involved as well as get off and get off yourself. But nine total team assists between our guards. We got to do a better job of distributing the ball. And I guess it's not always the, the, the guard's fault. You got to make a shot for my assist to count, but we got to, that means we yeah. got to set guys up even better, get in the lane, drop off to Jesse, you know, Benny, 
uh, Munir. We got to get those guys involved, and um, that's what it's going to be going forward. I don't want to keep saying they're a young team because that is the fact. They are a young team, and we said it before, there's going to be growing pains. So these are things that we kind of anticipated. But I can't say that I would have I anticipated it against Colgate. Now, granted, their guard, their, they, they, you know, their their leaders, their juniors and seniors played well. You know, I think that there was a guy on um, Colgate who didn't score a point, but he had like seven assists, seven rebounds, didn't score a point. He's a junior. Then you got Tucker. You know, he hit seven three, shooting at a high seven for eleven or something, seven for twelve, twenty seven points. You know, what I mean, they played good basketball, but. Um, we're going to have to learn on the fly, like we said, and, w- and bringing it back, circling it back to Joe, you're going to have to lead us. As much as we're saying Judah is the lead guard and Judah is going to take pressure off of him, which is great. You know, he got it. He was able to get up 12 shots, but he's going to have to lead us. We can't put that responsibility on the back of a freshman unless, you know, you were number 15 and your name is Carmelo Anthony. Yeah. And then you were number three, and your name is Jerry McNamara. And even with those two guys, they had they had um, Craig Forth, and Quef Duaney. They had Skinny yeah. in there, so they had good guys Josh to compliment Pace. them. Jay Pace, you feel me? Yeah. Um, Billy, you know what I mean. So they had good right. complimentary pieces where everybody knew their role. They knew what time it was, and everybody could you know um, feed off of one another. So we're gonna need Joe to really take on that responsibility. And being the focal point, everybody in the country knows what he's going to do. So they're going to guard him. We might see them guard him the way they guarded Buddy last year. You know what I mean? And he's going to have to figure out other ways to score and other ways to be effective going forward. Because um, this, you know, not to be harsh, but it isn't going to cut it with him playing like this and expecting us to be successful this year. Yeah, and and, and, and again, I know it's early. Ahead, it's early. Don't don't shoot the messenger. I know it's early. It's early. But this is, that's what I'm speaking on. I'm speaking on the present. I'm not speaking on what could happen in the future. I'm just speaking on what I seen last night. You know, I'm speaking on what's going on right now with this team. I know that things will get better. That's a fact. We know how hard they work. We know how demanding coaches, Jerry is, um, Red, Griff. We know how hard the managers work. We know how hard Kabilis works. All that we know because we've been there, right? And it's early, but... Speaking on what we saw last night, what I saw, we're gonna have to, we're gonna need a lot more from Joe to be successful. And and it's early too, Joe. But at the same time, we never saw, uh, we never saw Syracuse lose to Colgate two times in a row in 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 our lifetime yeah. and, and in a lot of people's lifetime. So I guess like, you know, obviously we're not panicking. You know, there's seven freshmen. We talked about it before the season. It's going to be a lot of ups and downs. I don't think we expected to see it this early on. And, and to going back to your point uh, about Colgate having the experience, they know how to play against the zone. Like, these guys have been there yeah. together since freshman year. So they know the in and outs of the zone. They they played against it last year, had a lot of success against it, right? And then on the other side, you know, with us, we got a lot of inexperience playing the zone, mm-hmm. you know? So the guys are going against mm-hmm. a team knows what spots to get it to on the floor to break down the zone and then for us we're not really comfortable making those rotations like we should be and it showed you know what I mean? right. the, the, the inexperience really showed and especially on the defensive side of the ball you know offensively you know we got into over dribbling you know no spacing and it and it hurts us when it feels like we only have one shooter you know what I mean? Like, if, if we only have yeah. one shooter on the floor, Judah and guys who can create on their own, it, it limits their ability now to do things because the floor is so compact. You know, guys are just right here in the paint. You know what I mean? Now when we kick it out, they're just forcing you to, to take jump shots. And, you know, who was it? Chris uh, Chris Bell, who, you know, come in as a highly, you know, highly touted shooter. You know, we really haven't been seeing him in, in – the reason why is he's not rebounding the ball and he's yeah. he's not rotating right on, on on the backside of the zone. And and we all know, bro, like if you're not rebounding at, at that position, I mean, you know more than anyone because that was your position. You know what I'm saying? So if, if yeah. you're not rebounding yeah. there, if you're not rotating, you know, right in that backside, he's going to take you out of the game. You know what I mean? Oh, it's, yeah, no it, question. It, it, it's, 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 that's a crucial part of the zone. And trust me, I've gotten – 
you know, my fair share of cuss outs for not rebounding the ball. Even when I think I, I had I was in no position to get it, it falls into my zone. That's my responsibility. And we all know it's hard to rebound out of the zone. That's one of the, I guess, cons of playing the zone is you're not boxing out of man. You're kind of boxing out of area. It could be two guys in your area. Now you got to, you know, just use your, your instincts of where you think the ball is going to come off. You know what I mean? So these things are difficult. I wanted to ask you a question, just looking at the uh, stats last night. I want to know how much stock do you put into plus minuses? Are you someone that I know that's very, you know, that's an, another part of analytics that people look at. Um, but I could be, you know, either in the positives or the negatives, depending on who I'm on the court with. I could be on the court for 10 minutes and our team is doing well. Now I am at a plus 10. But really, I personally didn't do shit on the court. So when is it yeah. that plus minuses matter? You know what I mean? Or I could, you know, that's just the reality of it. But when do you think that plus minuses, if you do put any stock into it, matter? Because as we, as I'm looking at the stats, I see that Joel played 33 minutes and was at a minus 16. So that means you were a large part. You were in the game for, you were basically in for all, all game. You were in, in there, except for seven minutes. You know what I mean? So do you put stock in the plus minuses? Judah minus 13 like do you what do you think about that I mean I'm not a big analytical guy at all I mean I, from last night I mean nobody we, we were down the whole game like from start to finish like Colgate really dominated the game so like, I don't know if anybody mm -hmm. was in any uh, plus on, on the court last Cy night Mare. you know Cymer okay yeah Cymer what was he plus Cymer and Justin plus five Justin Taylor plus five, but zero, zero across the zeros across the board. Right. So, um, again, like I said, I don't put too much stock into it. I just want to know how you felt because there is some people that feel like that makes a, a, a huge difference in a person's ability to contribute is their plus minuses. So I just wanted to know your take on it. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I just, I'm, with I'm you. Not a big fan because you said, you know, Justin was a plus. He only played like five minutes. You know what I'm right. saying? And, and then he played He played five minutes at the end of the game when it didn't even matter. You, you know what I mean? Right. And then you know, I guess the same thing with Cy. Cy came in, he, you know, he had some good drives and stuff, but we were down. You know what I'm saying? It's not like yeah, those yeah. guys. He played 25 and, and, minutes, so yeah, I feel you. <clears throat> yeah, so I wanted to know, but that, no, I feel you. And another, obviously, a big part is the, the turnovers, you know, the assist to turnover ratio totals. You know what I mean? Nine assists. 13 turnovers, which isn't a lot for a game. 13 turnovers is actually not bad. Solid. Yeah. Right. But then when you have only nine assists, you know what I mean? That's what makes it a little bit more difficult to deal with because we're not getting guys shots. We're not getting guys involved. So, um, but my bright spot again, you know, I'm, I called him out. I said, that was my X factor for the season. And he played solid. Benny played, came he out did. and played really well. Shout you know out to I mean? Benny. So I always think real. there's something positive that you could take from from something. I mean, you could try to you could go searching, and um, I think that Benny, you know, played himself a good basketball game. He put it together, 17 points, um, eight rebounds. He shot 50 percent from the field. So again, that's something that we got to see consistently. You know what I mean? So uh, of course, a bunch of things have to happen well for us to win. But that's something that I like to see personally because. For one, I called him my X factor, so I got to make sure that, you know, I could always go back and say, you know, hopefully I was right about what I said and what I think he could become on this team and for this program in the future. Um, but also for him, again, because we know confidence is a big thing. E. Confidence, you need that. You got to be able to build off of something, and, and that's good to see him come out. Unfortunately, we get a loss, um, but it's good to see him come out and, and, and play the way he did, which him playing that way, to your point last week, now Malik doesn't get no time because he's playing pretty well, right? So right. that's, again, a coach's job is very difficult on when you got to make certain decisions, certain substitutions, you know what I mean? But he's playing well. Malik didn't see the floor as much, although we know he could give us some positive. He could have a positive impact on the game. Um, Benny was playing well, and he, you know, there's just hard to find time for him when someone's playing that well. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, and especially, you know, yesterday when we're playing from behind, we need guys yeah. who are going to come in and be able to score the basketball. You know, obviously Malik's not a guy that you're going to give the ball to and tell him to go score. Right now he's at the stage where he's getting drop-offs, he's getting garbage buckets, he's running the floor, you know, he's getting tips and steals. That's how he could he could be effective. So last night it wasn't even really his type of game to be in. You, you know, 
know what I mean? And and again, shout out to Benny, man, because we've been on him. You know, we we've been honest about um, our evaluation about him, thinking that he could he could be better, bro. He could be better, and he could he could be more consistent. I think yesterday, um, you know, there were not a lot of positives, but we we definitely could um, you know take some out of there, and, and Benny was one of them. But what I saw from him was a little bit of fucking fucking emotion, bro. Like, yeah. you know, I saw him. I saw him hit a free throw jump jumper, and then I saw him turn the coach. He's like, I got it. I got it. I could, you know, I could shoot it, you know. And then, you know, even though he missed a few others, he still shot the ball with confidence. You know, he he he's attacking yeah. the rim. You know, is was he perfect? No, he he probably missed some box out. He missed some rotations in the zone. Uh, but everyone did last night. But but for real. Shout out to Benny because we want to see that on a you know every game basis. We you could do that, bro. Yeah. You know, it, and I don't care who it, who it's against. Like you're the most athletic dude on the floor every time you step on, regardless who it is. Usually, you know, what I mean, and that's what kind of bothered me about last night, Joe, was like because we got out rebounded by Colgate. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like our guys are stronger, faster, more athletic. We could jump higher, like. There's no way like a Colgate team should should out rebound us. That that and and that goes back to toughness and physicality and just imposing your will. And, and, and we didn't do that at all last night, bro. Like I, I I said it in the post game with with Brian Higgins. Like we really looked soft out there. Like lack toughness. You you know what I mean? And I know Coach say yeah. like last year said that a few times. He's like this team is tough to see. Yesterday I I didn't see it, bro. Like I, I just didn't see guys. You know, we talked about Jesse. Like, yo, bro, be that enforcer, man. You might have to knock a motherfucker down real quick, get an offensive foul, just to set the tone and let them know. Especially against a Colgate team, like, like when you when a team come like uh, in uh, to the dome, like a Colgate or Northeastern or something, and you let them play that good for that long, now their confidence is right there. Like, think, all right, shit, we could yeah. we could play. We can play with this team, you know what I mean? Instead of in the first five minutes knocking a motherfucker right down in his head and letting him know, like, yo, this is gonna be like this the whole game. I'm stronger than you. I'm bigger. I'm faster. Like, you're gonna have to deal with this shit. We didn't. Exactly. We didn't do. We didn't do anything. Any of that, bro. Like, where is the t- Like, where is the? Who's the vocal leaders, bro? Like, we we talk about this all the time. Like, we have three seniors. You know, it, it's Joe, Saimir. And Jesse, we know Jesse's personality is not, he's not really, he, he's not going to be that guy to go up and, and, and start, you know, being vocal, talking to God. It has to be Joe. It has to be side mirror. And, and I didn't see it last night, especially when we're down at home against Colgate. Like you got to fire these guys up, man. I, what did we talk yeah. about last year? Joe? Like huddle them up at the free throw line. Like get them going. They had, they had 19 threes, bro. They had 19 three pointers. Like they, they shouldn't even after that fucking sixth seventh one, I'm on a, yo I'm I'm this I'm finding this motherfucker like everywhere he go. We 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 talking like where's the communication in the zone? I, in the zone I'm seeing two guys from the wing fly up to the top like in the same position. Like so we were we were just all out of sorts. But but again, bro, you could be all out of sorts and still have toughness. You know, still bring the toughness. And I and I hope these guys see it because this isn't a. You know, we're not trying to disrespect anybody, but you have to ha- you have to play with that, bro. With like a chip, you can't you can't be out there playing cool, like you're just going through yeah. the motions. You got to have a, a, a play with a chip on your shoulder. You know what I mean? And like we were saying, you know, early when we were speaking off off camera, um, I hope they understand that we're not. It's, it's very. I don't even want to call myself or call us part of the media, right? Right. Like in a sense, we, we are, but we aren't. You know, we're just exactly. on here talking some shit, right? And, and <laughs> yeah. like I was saying, <laughs> like I was saying, bro, uh, you almost don't want to be too critical of these guys because, like I said, we, we've been through it. We know how hard it is to, first of all, yeah. get to that level. As a freshman, getting recruited, being able to be uh, looked at as someone good enough to come play in the ACC, play for Syracuse or the Big East, whatever it is, right? So we know the hard work that it takes to get to that point. We're not taking none of that away from these guys. You know what I mean? We're, we understand more on a personal level than probably a lot of people that is covering the game, how hard it is to get to that level. 
right? super hard. But we also know we also know now that part is taken care of. I want everybody on that roster to know that any we understand what you guys are going through because we've been through it ourselves, right? But we also know what it is to win, what it is to compete, you know, what it is to do the little things out there. So that's where we come in and we may sound a little critical is because I know that you're capable. If you got to this point, it's because you're capable of doing those little things. You feel yeah. me? Because if you weren't, you wouldn't have been in the position that you are. You would have been at another school. You would have been in the, you know, the MEAC or the, 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 the A-10, which nothing wrong with the A-10, but you wouldn't be in the ACC or the Big East when it was the Big East, right? So because we know you have the ability to be those players, because it was Coach Bayheim had to agree, had to sign off on you coming here, you know, after Red, G Mac, or Griff said, look, we got us one. This is a good recruit. We think that he could help us X, Y, Z type of way. Coach had to sign off, which means everybody was in agreement that you are capable and uh, of coming to Syracuse and contributing, right? So when, now when you get on the court and you're doing the opposite of what Coach thought you could do, you're doing the opposite of what some alum thought you could do, that's where the frustration comes in. So we're not being critical from the standpoint of, these guys are not good. We know you're fucking good. You're elite because you're a serious. Yeah. If you weren't exactly. elite, you wouldn't be there, right? But it's because we know what you're capable of and we know that what you should be doing out there is where we come in. So I always want to let it be known that we're going to keep it real. We're not going to kill you. We're not going to bash you. It might sound critical, but it's only because we know what you're capable of doing, right? So I just want to put that out there, make it, make it known that we're not coming on here every Wednesday or whenever it is that we come on for a recap to look for somebody to kill, right? It so happened to be Joe because Joe, we expect more from you. You should expect more from yourself, your staff, your teammates. Yeah. And I'm sure somewhere within himself, he knows that. Benny knows the same thing. Benny been here already for a year. He knows how good he can be, right? Judah is young, but we know how good he could be. So these things is not like we're going to come on here and bash you nah, or, come, or be critical of you. Nah, we're not like the, the average fan that's going to be, that doesn't know. We know. You feel me? We know. So that's what, you know, they got to understand. You know what I mean? So it's no malice in our words. There's no intent to to, to diminish you and, and what you've done and what you've accomplished to this point. It's just we're being real. We're watching the game and analyzing it from a lens of we've played, you're there, and we yeah. know you can do better. You know what I mean? So it's like work. no one really cares about the excuses. Get it done at that point because we're – as a senior, there's no coming back to Syracuse. Wherever you go next, believe me, it's going to be no one cares, work harder, get me a win, produce. That's really what it comes down to. So they got to understand that. It's better you understand that early than to get caught off guard when you go somewhere, when you leave school, and you're like, shit, this ain't what I thought it was. You know, it's tough out here. So you might as well put yourself in the mindset of let's, keep, let's rely on that hard work. You got to hang your hat on hard work. And, and, you know, figure out how to get some dubs, man. That's what it's going to come down to. No one cares. They only care about the results. You know what I mean? Hey, George, clip that. Clip that. Clip that right there because that was perfectly said, man. <laughs> like, that's you, – you, you don't, you don't want to bash them, but you – real because at the end of the day, there's so many kids that out here that they play bad and they feel bad for themselves. And then, and then people give them excuses, like their handlers or whatever, like, oh, he wasn't passing you the ball. You know, you, you right. know, he wasn't doing, wasn't doing that. But at the end of the day, you got to be able to be real with yourself. Like, damn, I got to be better. Like, I know I got to make shots. I got to take better shots. I got to move the ball. I got to keep my man in front. Like, that's what we're trying to bring to you. Like, we want you to be realistic with yourselves because we had to do that. You know, it was times where I remember I'm blaming other people for how I'm playing. And I had to come to the realization, like, man, that ain't their fault. That's my fault. I need to fucking yeah. get in the gym, watch film, you know, get extra shots, whatever it is. Because because I'm the one playing. Like, coach can put me in position. Right. Coach can, you know, do all that. But I'm the one who got to go out there and execute and do it. Like, you can't tell me that coach was teaching that zone, like, how, how it was played last night. That shit looked at look, – see, looked at – that shit looked terrible. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> – like really, like it, yeah. the, zone, the zone, it looked bad, man. It, it really did. And then man yeah. to man, I thought that we would have stayed in man to man more against a team like Colgate because a, a, a team like Colgate loves to play against the zone. Just how they they, they the want to shoot, they shot fifty percent. You know what I mean? <laughs> how they moved the ball. If you're not flying around and not there right on the pass, 
Like, they just need that much space, bro. That shit going up. But I, I thought, like, man-to-man, like, we could get up and, and, and get some ball pressure, make these guys drive and, and, and attack the best. But, bro, I'm watching the man-to-man, and these motherfuckers just letting them sit back and survey. Like, now that's when you letting letting dudes backdoor cut. Yeah. Like, Colgate is a good passing team, and, and they, they know how to read, you know, situations and read the defense good. But, you know, we all know— yeah, they're, if you get up and play, put some ball pressure, that that whole shit changed. You know what I mean? Now yep. you like now you kind of like got to make a quicker decision. We weren't able to do that, and I think with like the guys that we have, the athletic ability, the quickness, like I, I thought we would have been better with that. You know what I mean? And just keeping we guys should. in front period. We should. We you know definitely I mean? should, man. Yeah, and and that's where we got to figure out. You know how much. Well, we're not. I'm not on site, so I don't know how much time and practice is being um, put into man-to-man principles. Although, like we know, we play a zone that has man-to-man principles, but you know, a lot of, the 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 basic details of man-to-man at this level. So, and everybody being on the same page because any defense you play, whether you're doing a full court press, half court, uh, half court press, half court zone, half court man, everybody has to be on the same page. Five guys moving as one is what they say in whatever defense that you're playing. Now, you want to cause, you know, rotations, and you want to cause extra passes. You want to disrupt. And we didn't do enough disrupting last night. You know, every it was kind of like you said, I'm, I have the ability to just love, keep the ball here. There's not really no real pressure in the sense that I'm not up on the ball. I'm kind of keeping that, um, like they say, that, that arm's distance away. But shit, you play in that Syracuse, you're, you're, you're wingspan, you six. Six, eleven, seven feet wingspan. That one arm length away is far as shit, right? So now that pressure on the ball, you think that your one arm's length away is not enough because now these are college players that have experience, and that pressure is not doing much, right? So now I can see, I can make my passes. You know, I'm shooting the ball. Closeouts are a little. You're closing out short against guys who are hot instead of as soon as they get the ball, identifying he already has four threes. Listen, next time he gets the ball, I gotta see where he's at. Maybe the zone has to move up a bit where we shade more to his side to make somebody else make a play, you know? So little things like that, that they got to learn again, learn on the fly. And I don't doubt that they're going to watch film and coach is going to do some yelling hundred percent, you know, um, as he should. And the assistants, Jerry, red Griff, they're going to get with their guys and show them breakdown of what they should have done. And hopefully we could see some change in the next game where, all right, we could tell that they learned something because the best thing, you know, you got to learn from your mistakes. You can't make the same mistakes two and three times. You know what I mean? So um, they're going to learn on the fly, bro. So it, it, it's not something that I'm going to keep saying for the, for the remainder of the year. The fact that they're young, the fact that they're inexperienced. Five games into college, you got experience now. That's, especially when you're playing. Especially when you're actually on the court and you're getting and you're playing, bro. Practice is, is it should do enough as far as experience goes and getting you ready. But five games that count at the college level, you got experience and you should be ready to go. And then when you get into conference play, yeah, you got to adjust because now you're not playing Colgate. Now you're playing Colgate discipline teams with your athleticism. So now it's like, shit, now I got to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So now it's like, I got to turn it up a notch. I'm playing North Carolina, number one, two, top five in the country, whatever they are right now. You know, I'm playing Duke. Florida State, these teams are going to be disciplined, Miami, but they will be athletic as well. They can shoot just as well, but they're athletic now. So how are you going to adjust? I think the only thing is, is you have to raise that level of compete. You know what I mean? You got to compete a little bit better. And that's it. There's been plenty of times where Murph called me soft as shit. And he was right. I was playing soft. I was getting pushed out the way. But then that's when you go to the bench, you come back in the game and you adjust. It's all about adjustments. Adjusting from one half to the next, adjusting from one game to the next, and hopefully these guys have a short memory because you know you need that in basketball. Whether you win a big game or lose a bad one, you got to have a short memory because it's another game coming around for you to redeem yourself, right? One game doesn't make or break the season, but shit, we can't be losing. We can't lose the games. We were here last year. The games that we're supposed to win on paper, we have to figure out a way to get a win. Ugly, scraping, whatever it is, a win is a win. And those are the wins that we got to get because in March is when you got to be ready to make that that stride. You got to hit your stride come February, March, and we got to get these wins because all these wins will come back to haunt you. And I don't care, bro, if we got twelve freshmen, bro. We supposed to beat Colgate. If you come to Q's, 
Like you, you know what I'm saying? As a player, like we're sure. we not supposed to play Colgate, not two years in a row. And, and, and again, I said this on the post game, like no slight to, to Colgate at all. They're, I think they're a well-coached team and um, they got some smart players on their team and they got some good guys that could play, shoot the ball. And mid-major overall, you know, the last five to 10 years uh, has gotten better. Like we've seen, like we, yeah. we've seen that from that mid-major just close that gap a little bit. And we've seen a lot of teams, you know, win, win the NCAA tournament te- uh, games and, and, and beat high major teams. So um, that, I mean, they are closing the gap, but bro, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? We not, yeah. we not supposed to go good. Like I said, like it hasn't happened in 60 years for a reason. You, you you know what I'm saying, but and we you know we can go back to 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 you know when we, when you guys lost to uh, to Lemoyne that was Lemoyne that was some freaky right there that was freaky but then you guys went on to be number one in the country yeah. you know what I'm saying so like yeah that was that we, was we, freaky that was freaky all right <laughs> we get, I, I want to ask you I want to ask you something Joe because this is something that um Coach Beheim said in the pressure last night that you know, I thought it was interesting and. Um, I could kind of see where he's going with it. He said that this team isn't going to be a team that has a lot of assists he's because it's more, um, you know, one-on-one guys are driving in the assists that you, that you will get are either going to be driving kicks or maybe a drive in a, in a, in a oop or, or a drop off. And, um, and then the other way we're going to have to score the ball, I think it, is a big part of what we need to be able to do is get out and transition. But we can't do that if yeah. we don't play defense and, and, and don't rebound the ball. We're not even going to be able to get it to get right. into that position. But I just want to know your thoughts on that, bro. That he, you know, he, he says that this is a team that's, you know, you're going to look at the box score at the end of the game and they might not have, you know, a lot of assists. Like last night, like I said, they had nine assists. But again, to your point, Getting out in transition usually leads to an assist. You got to stop. There's usually someone ahead of the ball. You pass it up. That's an assist, right? Again, it's just going to be learning how to create for others. And I think that comes with time and learning, you know, that team synergy, that team chemistry matters. Where do you like to get the ball? It's still, again, five games in, I won't be saying this anymore. You'll learn your teammates. You'll know exactly where they need to need the ball and where, to, where they can be effective. But um, I do see this team having the ability to – have more assists than last year's team in the sense where last no year I felt like there was a lot of uh, a lot of one on one ball stopping and letting and letting guys go to work. You know, we saw some catch and shoot from from Cole. Cole would catch the ball and and raise up. But I think this team has the ability. You know, and, and despite what Coach said, I believe that they have the ability to get some assists just because they have the the guy to do it in Judah. They have the guy like Samir, two guys now as a, as opposed to. One slash none Copeland. last year. Copeland. That could Copeland. You know what I'm saying? They have guys who could get in there and create. Now it's just about making the right read, making the right pass, whether it's gonna be a shovel pass to the big or a kick out for a three. We gotta get guys open looks. Right. And that's what it comes down to. I think this team will be able to have games where they show signs of being able to share the ball and move it and get high assist games. But again, defense is gonna have to be a big key. We gotta get stops. Pass ahead again. That's an assist. We got to get at least three to four of those a game, and uh, once that zone starts flowing, I think that's where we'll start to pick it up. I don't. I can't foresee another nine assist game for a team. You know what I mean? Like, can't be that way. Now, if you give it inside and he has to go to work, and we know that's not an assist, right? But if we could get those penetrations where we get crack the free throw line, let the defense collapse a bit and make the right reads, now it's going to be on the guys to make the shots. So Benny, you're gonna be out there. You gotta make shots. Samir, Judah, Joe, you gotta be the one. Justin, you gotta knock them things down. But I think we could average more assists than that. I see what where coach is coming from. In a sense, we do have we have Judah, who's a he could break pretty much any guard down in the country and get to the basket and get to a shot. But somebody has to take it upon themselves to say, you know what? Let me facilitate. Scoring is gonna come as I'm in the game at some point. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to take opportunities away from yourself to score but somebody has to say you know what let me facilitate you know let me or, or play the game within the game at least one in every three possessions let me try to get an assist or whatever it is that you got to do mentally you know what i mean to get yourself or to get others involved rather sorry that's what you got to do especially with a young team right joe you know as a young player when you're not feeling the ball you're not touching the ball you're not you're not feeling like uh 
you're in the game, you know, as a young you're player, you can take, yeah. Yeah. now you feel like, you know, you're lazy. Now you're, now you're not giving effort on, on the other end of the floor. So that, I think not engaged. that's, that's Judah's going to be Judah's maturation process. Like we know you can score the ball. He's a talented dude, man. Like he's a talented, we, yeah. we can see it. Like obviously his jump shot has to improve. I think that's, you know, next it's being able to get others involved and then having a, a consistent jump shot. Because as we get deeper into the season, those guys are going to go under the screens. They're going to, you know, sink a little bit into that free throw lane. Now it's harder for you to drive. It's harder for, for you to space, you know, and, and get guys involved. So, he can score, but he he's a guy that, like you said, play the game within the game. Can, let me get all right. Let me get Joe going early. Boom, knock, get in, kick it out. Yeah. Let him knock two down. Now he's rolling because Judah and you. You gotta think you could get it whenever you want, bro. We know you could break it down mm-hmm. and get it. You know what I mean? Talk about getting in there, creating for others, getting their confidence going. And now when we really need some, all right, bet, give me that thing. I'm gonna go ahead and and, yep. and make a yep. play. Get to the get to the free throw line. Um, but it, exactly. as his jump shot, as his jump shot improves, like it's just, it, it, he's just going to be so much harder to guard. But he's a guy that you know oh, could yeah. get to the free throw. I think you know eight times a game, man. He, he he has that ability to get by guys. And then another thing, he's just he he has he can make tough shots, difficult shots. But I think a, a, another thing for him in his game is take the best shot that you can. Right? You know what I'm saying? You don't need to take all. The hard shots every single time you know you're just wearing yourself down having to dribble 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 spin spin pass it cut through get it again you know what i'm saying let, let, let's get it within the flow and and i know that this team right now especially early on we're not going to see like the flow on the offense and the execution on the offensive end it's not going to be great you know what i mean that's why we do need to get out in transition we we have to be that team that pushes the pace and, and gets ahead of the defense and get early buckets now, when you when you get that going, you get a couple of dunks, you get a couple of three point shots. Now, when you are faced with that half court exactly. defense, you're feeling better about yourself. You, you know what I'm exactly. saying? I think you know we can get a, a lot of assists, drive and kick. You know, kick, kicking it ahead. I, I understand what what coach is saying, but yeah, I think we have those tools to be able to you know create opportunities for not only ourselves but but for other guys. But it, it's you know what I mean. I, you want to be patient, but at the same time, bro, like, you know, this is college basketball. So, like, you, you got to understand, like, it comes with the territory. Like, you only get so much time to really, like, all right, yeah, all right, he's, he's, he's coming along, he's coming along. And nah, motherfucker, right. we need you right now, bro. We, we need, that's, <laughs> that's how it is. Like, we need you good right now because if, if you're not good, if, if, you know, some of these guys aren't giving us something till you know, conference play, we're going to be fucking behind. You know what I'm saying? Like, by, by that time, like, it's just the fact right now on this team, Joe has to shoot the ball well. Judah has to be able to, to score and, and create for others. Jesse has to be dominant on both ends of the floor. And and I, I haven't really talked about Jesse that much. Obviously, it's toughest, but we he's not a guy that we're just going to throw the ball down to. Because if you, if you can't throw it down to him against Colgate, and get some shit going. He took six, you're not gonna he took do six shots, man. Three for six. He, it, and you're not you gonna do that against North. He, 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 Joe, he's not a guy where you'd be like, go ahead, give him the ball, and he's that type of dude. Like even Coach said that he he's a guy who's gonna get it in transition. You know, get it off the lobs, and, and you might get it to where he gets it low enough to where he can just turn and go into it. Like Joe, why don't we have like a little play where? And we might. I mean, maybe I'm tripping, but like where you just do a little cross screen where either. You know, he can come over top and flash high and then just turn and go right yeah. into it, or he can come low yeah. and then and turn and, and go right into dunk. Yo, he catching the ball like by the third hash, and now you gotta try to dribble one, two, three times. Bro, you're not strong enough. You're not even fucking strong enough to, to get into my man body like that. Like you <laughs> your positioning has to be right there on the catch. So you could just turn and, yeah. and, and, and go into it. So I mean that's Stop something that obviously right below the basket. Yeah, they got. Yeah, keep, like, yeah, I see exactly what you mean. A little cross screen, maybe the guard, whoever it is, the two, maybe uh, Judah or Joe, let them switch, try to switch, and it could be even a screen to screener action. You feel me? Joe goes down, sets I'm a cross wrong. screen, yes, and then the four man come up up the free throw line and just try to get some action. Exactly. You know what I mean? Or you can do what it the where does. It could be even something like this, Joe. Like so, and we did this. So I'm bringing the ball up, boom! I pass it to either side, whatever. Now I cut through. When I'm cutting through, 
I'm cutting and then I'm going right into Jesse getting his guy, boom, hitting him coming this way. And then, like you said, now I'm coming off that top screen. Now you got two exactly. options. You got a guy, they got to worry about him. That takes away a little bit more pressure from Jesse. And then if Jesse gets it low enough, he can just, you know, turn it, turn exactly. and go to the rim. But, uh, exactly. you know, well, it's, it's experience and time. We'll see. Again, they're one game. I give them four more, three more games. Or one and one, they got three more games to really get going because, again, like we mentioned before, the season started and through the exhibition games, they're going to have to learn fast, bro. As much as they're learning on the fly, they got to be real cerebral with willingness to watch film and to learn and to really understand what it is they're seeing. We all know film sessions aren't fun. Whether you're doing it individually with a coach or if you're doing team sessions and you're the one that coach is talking about for five minutes, right? It's not fun, bro, but it's a learning experience, right? You got to take in the lesson. You got to take in the lesson. You really got to be when coach is yelling and he's doing his thing. And I had to learn from experience. At first, it's a little bit, it's tough. You know why it's tough? E, because you got your teammates who your homeboys, you know, they're all laughing at you and shit. You feel like your ego is being, you know what I mean? Coaching there telling you, what the fuck are you doing, son? Like, what the fuck is it? And you're thinking, God damn, bro, he's going crazy. And so now you're taking offense to it to a certain degree. Even if you don't want to, you'll start taking offense because he might be cussing you out or whatever the case is. It's film. Right, every school around America is having the same film sessions. If they mess up, bro, coaches on your ass. You know what I mean? So you got to learn, especially it being a bunch of freshmen on the team, that when coach is going at you, just listen to what he's saying, not how he's saying it, and learn from what you're seeing on the film, and don't do the same thing over and over again, bro. You know that's what's going to come down to. You got to be willing to learn, and I think this group is willing to learn. You know, I think, I think yeah, it's a good group of kids. I got two things for you, Joe. Uh, one, I just want to say, Bell, my guy Bell, right? Chris Bell. Bro, and, and uh, he's probably not listening. It doesn't matter. But we need you, man. Like, we need you to be a, a presence on that floor. You're not just a shooter. You're a guy who has to be effective in the back of that zone. You have to be able to rebound. You, you're a guy who could get that rebound and push it yourself. You know what I mean? I know you have that ability. I, I, I've seen him in high school. He was a highly rated you know, recruit coming yeah. out, I think California. So I know he's, he, he's probably down a little bit, you know, he only played eight minutes, but bro, if you hear any of this clip, man, get in that gym early today, you know, get your shots up and go in there and ask red or Griff, you know, can you see the back of the zone? How I'm supposed to rotate, you know, ask questions, man. It, 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 you know, I, I learned this because I did this in my career when I played bad. Sometimes I would sulk and then kind of like just, you know, go in a, in a dark hole, 